Hi, and welcome to Old English Outfitters YouTube channel. I'm Alan. If you've been following us lately, you know we've been talking a lot about the Springfield Armory Hellcat and the Sig Sauer P365, the reasonably high capacity 9mm small concealed carry pistols. And they're really cool and they're really popular and we've sold a lot of them and they're, they're excellent weapons to be sure. So we thought it would be kind of fun for this episode to go the other direction, okay? So instead of a high capacity pistol, we went with something with really low capacity. And specifically, we went with the Bond Arms Derringers. Now the Bond Arms is carried by people for concealed carry. You know, we've talked before about concealed carry weapons being, that's the, the stuff that's selling these days. That's what people are the most interested in because it's the most practical for them. It's the things that most people are gonna actually be able to get use out of, okay? Bond Arms in Granbury, Texas, <clears throat> run by a guy named Gordon Bond, makes the Bond Arms series Derringers, and they've been popular sellers for us. They're really nice. They're, they're, there are several people that make Derringers these days. Bond, by far, makes the best ones. They're really, really good. They're excellent quality, good materials, good workmanship, and they stand behind their products. Really good stuff. Is a two-shot Derringer viable as a defense weapon? For some people, it is. Is it for everybody? Probably not, but then nothing is for everybody, right? That's why there's so much variety in this market and in other things too. Not everything works for everybody, but a lot of people like these things and a lot of people have certain defensive niches that they use these things for. So the two we've got here is the Roughneck and the Rowdy. Appropriate names, by the way. The Roughneck and the Rowdy. What they've done, Bond has made these derringers. If you're familiar with them at all, or if you look them up, you know they made them for quite a while. And over the years, they've made some small little modifications and tweaks to them to make them work better and make them easier to use and all that sort of thing. What they've done here is what the same thing. They're following the same lead that some of the other manufacturers are following. In the current market, where really expensive stuff is hard to sell, they're coming up with a quality product at a reasonable price, and they've done it by taking their same basic design that they use for everything and just simplifying how they manufacture it. It's not finished quite as nice. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's roughneck and it's rowdy and it's just not finished to the high degree that some of their other weapons are. Still fully functional, still works just the same way. Pretty cool when you, when you actually get a chance to shoot one of these things, which as you'll see, we did. <clears throat> so, you know, we've talked before about Glocks. You say if you, if you can run one Glock, you can run them all, right? They all work the same way. They all take apart the same way. Bond Derringers are exactly the same, okay? The, if you can run one of them, you can run any of them because they're all essentially the same platform just with certain different individual characteristics and features. On these two, this one is the Roughneck. The Roughneck is a 9 millimeter. Really comfortable to shoot. Not bad at all. And surprisingly accurate for not much sights. Sights in this thing are this heavy blade up front and then you got just a notch in the back. Same thing on the other one. Same thing on, on the rest of theirs too. Uh, these are a two-shot Derringer. So how do you load and unload it? Well, you got a lever on the side right up here. You push that, pull that lever down and that lets you rotate the barrel up. Any of them work the same way. You rotate the barrel up, you put your two rounds in the barrel, you close it. That's all you got to do. These are single action weapons, single action, meaning you have to physically cock the hammer in order to fire it. Once you cock the hammer, you pull the trigger, you fire it, it automatically, there's a transfer bar in the hammer system that automatically resets to the next barrel, cock it again, the next barrel will fire. Which barrel will fire first, you say? Whichever one you want. You can set it up however you want. If you open the barrel with the hammer cocked, and you look inside and you see the firing pins, what you do is you pull the trigger and you lower the hammer and push it forward with your thumb and you'll see one of the firing pins stick out. In this case, get it where I can see it, in this case it's the top one. That means when I let this hammer back out that the bottom barrel will be the next one to fire. So if I load it and I close this, I know the bottom barrel is going to fire first. If I reverse the procedure, I can set up so the top barrel will fire first. So whichever one you want. Typically, one of the barrels, I think usually the bottom one, is regulated pretty closely to the sights. The other one will be a little bit different. If you fire these things for group on a target, what you'll notice is you'll get a group for one barrel. You fire the next barrel, you get a group for it. There'll be a little difference between them because they're separated slightly, right? 
Common features that these things have is a removable trigger guard. Okay, you can take that off if you want. Some of their models don't have it. Uh, we got the hammer that we talked about. We got a cross bolt safety right here. So if I push that cross bolt safety to this spot right there, so I don't have a red flash visible, it's on safe. And if you look, you can see where it actually physically blocks the hammer, keeps the hammer from coming all the way down against the firing pin. If I push it back the other way, back to the right side of the gun, I got a little red flash right there, a little red lever, red line on the safety. That lets the, the hammer travel all the way to the firing pin. These are rebounding hammers. So when you pull the trigger and the hammer goes down, it rebounds back. And when it rebounds back, it locks in that position. So in even if you don't have the the uh, the thumb safety, the little, little push button cross bolt safety, even if you don't have that engaged, this thing will still lock in that place. Pull the trigger and you can move it forward. So like a lot of things, what do we always say? Keep the finger off the trigger, take your red shoot, right? Okay, same business here. The cross bolt safety has a little slot in it. That's because you get a little, little tool with this thing. You can actually turn that cross bolt safety, lock it in position, in a safe position so that nobody can use this unless they have the tool to unlock it. <clears throat> the nine millimeter version of this, uh, of these particular guns and, and any of the ones that use uh, semi-automatic pistol cartridges do not have an extractor or an ejector. They have a slot cut right here. So, and you probably see it on the video, when we put the rounds in, when you take them out, you got to hook it with your corner of your finger or something and pull it out. That's how you get those out of there. Let's face it, this is not a rapid reload gun, okay? We're not going to pull rounds and, and, and be in an extended gunfight with us. Not the purpose of it, okay? Not the niche it fills. But that's how that one works. Uh, other common features on a lot of their guns, including the other one to look at, is the, sh is the short rubber grip. How many fingers can I get on it? Well, you can see I can get two pretty comfortably right there. I got my trigger finger up here, and I'm going to use my thumb to cock the hammer. It's actually not bad, and it's pretty comfortable. And the 9mm, not bad to shoot. Not bad to shoot. We shot several different rounds out of it. Pretty good. Not, not uncomfortable at all. Really small. Not lightweight. This thing is all stainless steel. These weigh around 20 ounces, 21, depending on the mo exact model. So and you appreciate that when you shoot it, by the way, because as we know, heavier weight mitigates recoil, right? Okay, so that is the Roughneck. <clears throat> the Rowdy, same idea, same construction, didn't polish everything, left some of the metal a little bit more matte finished, which reduces the price point. Same features, loads and unloads the same way, same rubber grips, same hammer that you have to cock, same cross bolt safety, removable trigger guard, the whole shebang. Except this one is chambered in 45 Colt or two and a half inch 410 shotgun shells. We don't have enough chamber here to handle a three inch. Some of their models do. This one doesn't. Because we're dealing with rimmed cartridges like the 410s or the 45 Colts, we actually have a little extractor here, a little spring loaded plunger loaded extractor that uh, when you when you push it, push it from that side, push it that way, that pushes this out, that pushes the cartridges out where you can hook them and pull them out of there, okay? Uh, some of these things, sometimes I've seen them where you, they'll fall out. So once in a while you get a cartridge, it'll fall out. You just turn it upside down, shake it, it'll fall out. Some of them don't, just depends. Again, not a high capacity weapon. Polar opposite of some of the stuff we've been talking about. Another feature that Bond Arms Derringers, any of them, share is the fact that they sell all kinds of different grips. You can get different grips. You can get nice looking wood ones. You can get laminated ones. You can get longer ones. The barrels. This pin right there, right there, right there, that pin. You take an Allen wrench, you pull that pin out, the barrels come off. From Bond Arms, you can get other barrels. 22 long rifle all the way up to 3 inch 410 and 45 Colt. 357, 9, 45 ACP, all kinds of caliber options. Different barrel lengths. You pull that pin out, buy a new set of barrels, put it on, put the pin back in, you're off the races. Good to go. You say, wait a minute, 22 long rifle, that's a rim fire. What does that do? Nothing. These things are precision machined. You put a 22 barrel in, the existing firing pins know, are, are precisely placed so they will operate that rim fire cartridge with the same reliability and the same action that you use for any of the center fires. So they're really well thought out system. <clears throat> 
The interchangeability of barrels and grips applies to these guns, even though they're significantly less expensive than their maybe their older or normal line, you might say. Still applies. You can still change grips. You can still change barrels. We get a reasonable amount of interest in these things. So we got a couple of these things in stock, and we can always buy more of them or get more of them for you. Order them, special order them, things like that if you need them. The uh, Roughneck, the uh, 9mm one, currently goes for 269 uh, here at Old English. The 2.5 inch 41045 Colt, the Rowdy, goes for 289 We talked about, I talked about the 9mm, how comfortable it was to shoot. This thing with 45 Colt, really comfortable. Not a big deal at all to shoot. It's got enough weight, it sits down in your hand when you fire it, not bad. The two and a half inch 410s, we shot some Winchester PDX-1 defense loads. They're rowdy, they'll rock you a little bit, okay? There's some recoil there. Not as much as you'd think there would be. It's still very manageable, and again, you're not gonna take it to the range and shoot 50 two and a half inch 410s through it. At least not unless you enjoy getting beat up. See what we get. That's got some wallop. A word about these things. I've heard people talk about, well, the trigger's really, really heavy. It's actually not really heavy. It's how it's built. And if you understand how it's built, it makes all the difference in the world. The trigger, let me get this down here, maybe where he can see it with the other. The trigger pivots, okay? So you don't pull it straight back. It pivots a little bit. So how that works is if I get up here on this part of the trigger and I'm pulling that, I'm going to pull that all day long. We're not going to get anywhere. You got to get down here on the bottom where that little subtle little curve is. And right there, it actually isn't bad at all. I don't know what the exact weight is, but it's not bad. But you got to get the bottom of the trigger, not up at the top. You grab it up toward the top. The pull, you may, if you're kind of halfway in between, you'll get it, but it's going to be heavy because you're fighting where it pivots. Okay. So remember that, understand that you won't really have too much trouble shooting it. Cool little guns. Um, they're, they're a lot of fun to shoot. What do you do with them defensively? What's the tactical niche that they fit, right, as a defensive handgun? Well, a couple things, okay? I got a, a really good friend who, as we speak, as we're filming this, is in Moultrie, Georgia. And he's doing a, a dove hunt down there, which he goes every year. He got one of these, 410. He carries it specifically because they're overrun with rattlesnakes down there. Now, I know you sometimes people say, well, okay, just avoid the snake. Well, sometimes that's not always possible. You might find yourself in a position where you just need to defend yourself against it. That's the safest approach. He carries the 2.5-inch 410 specifically for that mission, to, for snake defense. I've talked to other people who buy these guns for exactly that purpose. Defensively against human beings, these things, like a lot of, of, of concealed carry pistols, where are you going to use them? You're going to use them from contact distance, literally grappling distance, up to probably about 10 feet. Many, many, many encounters occur at those kind of distances. At those kind of ranges, either one of these are going to be plenty enough accurate to do the job as long as you can do the job with them. You're limited to two shots. You know that when you pick one of these things. So would it be nice to have more rounds? Well, it depends. Some people, this is what they want. Some people, this is what they like. Isn't it nice to be able to get it just because you like it? Not because somebody says you have to have this or somebody says you can't have this. Isn't it nice to be able to do it just because you like it? So if that's your taste, there they are. Uh, pretty good price points on these. The normal polished Bond Derringers and similar calibers are up in that uh, four and a half to five, sometimes more range, depending on which model. But they're a good company, and if you look them up and you look, they got a lot of different stuff that they make. Uh, they even make a little semi-automatic pistol. Uh, but you look them up, and if you see something that they've got that we don't have, we can always special order it for you. Uh, that's uh, pretty much what I got for right now. Like I said, we just thought it'd be fun to uh, jump to the other side of the capacity spectrum and go from... 10 rounds and 12 rounds and 13 rounds of 9mm down to 2 rounds of 9mm or 2 rounds of 45 or 410. So, a little different perspective. Uh, so, that's what we have for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. Uh, let us know what you think. As I'll try to mention, if there's something you're interested in, let us know. Maybe we can scare one up and take a look at it for you. So, for right now, uh, I'm Alan for Old English Outfitters. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.